and I am gonna do my best uh, to read this text. Um, this is Phineas McGuire Gets Slimed um, by Frances O'Rourke Dowell. And this is for my fourth graders that I don't get to be with for the next six weeks. So after you're done listening to or reading this uh, chapter one, I'm just asking that you send me an email um, with your summary. All right, and I'm gonna do my best to flip the camera around here and then I'm gonna just um, show the book so that you can follow along in the text. And if you, uh, you should have the book at home. So if you wanna pick it up and follow along, you can do that too. All right, so bear with me as I um, flip this around and get us ready. <clears throat> okay, so this is Phineas L. McGuire Gets Slimed. Here we go. Chapter one. My name is Phineas Listerman McGuire. I'm gonna kind of do it this way so you guys can see. There we go. <clears throat> My name is Phineas Listerman McGuire. Most people call me Mac. My Sunday school teacher and my pediatrician call me Phineas. A few people, mostly my great uncle Phil and his cockatiel Sparky call me Finn. Nobody calls me Listerman, nobody. I mean, not one single person. Everybody got that? <laughs> I am currently in the fourth grade at Woodbrook Elementary School. On the first day of school, my teacher, Mrs. Tuttle, asked us to write down our number one, two, and three goals for the year. Here is what I wrote. One, to be the best fourth grade scientist ever. Two, to be the best fourth grade scientist ever. Three, to be the best fourth grade scientist ever. So far, this has not happened. For example, I did not win the fourth grade science fair. Me and my best friend Ben got an honorable mention. We made a volcano. It was a pretty good volcano, since I'm an expert volcano maker. But these days, it takes more than baking soda and vinegar to get a science fair judge excited. I learned that the hard way. Today, Mrs. Tuttle asked us to take out our goal sheets and review our goals. She says the first week of November is a good time for goal reviewing. She also says most people who don't meet their goals fail because they, don't, because they forget what their goals were in the first place. What is one step you can make this week that will help you meet one of your goals? Mrs. Tuttle asked. She took a yellow rubber frog from the jar of, of rubber frogs she keeps on her desk and balanced it on the tip of her finger. Think of one small thing you can do. I put my head down on my desk. After getting an honorable mention in the science fair, the only step I could take was to erase my three goals and start over. Maybe my goal could be to remember to take my gym clothes home on Friday afternoons. Not that I would ever meet that goal either. <laughs> Aretha Timmons, who sits behind me in Mrs. Tuttle's class and who won second place in the fourth grade science fair, popped her pencil against the back of my head. Why so glum, chum? She asked. What goals did you put down anyway? I held up my paper so she could read it. Hmm, she said. Well, it's still pretty early in the year. You could do something amazing before Christmas if you put your mind to it. Ben, who sits one row over and two seats back from me, leaned toward us. I've got two words for you, Mac Albert. Mr. Genius Scientist Einstein. That's five words, I said. Maybe Ben's goal should be to learn how to count. My point is, Albert Einstein, the most famous genius scientist of the world, flunked math about a thousand times. I don't think he even graduated from high school. He was a complete bird brain until he was 30 or something. I didn't flunk math, I told him. I just didn't win first prize at the science fair. See, Ben shouted gleefully, you're even smarter than Albert Einstein. 
Ben is not a famous genius scientist, in case you were wondering. He's a pretty good friend, though. What you need is a good project, Aretha said. For example, if you could figure out a cure to a disease, that would be excellent. I've never heard of a fourth grader curing a disease before. Or maybe you could rid the world of mold, Ben said. I mean, for a fourth grader, you sure know a lot about moldy junk. It's true. I have always been sort of a genius when it comes to mold. Mold is like science that's happening all over your house. Unless your family is really neat and tidy and cleans out the refrigerator on a regular basis. This does not describe my family at all. Not all mold is bad, I told Ben, showing off my geniosity. In fact, one of the most important medicines ever, penicillin, is made from mold. So, figure out how to get rid of the bad mold, Ben said. My mom would give you 20 bucks if you could get rid of the mold in our shower. That's all she ever talks about practically. Rid the world of bad mold. It sounded like the sort of thing a superhero would do in a comic book if comic books were written by scientists with a special interest in single-celled organisms made out of fungus. I could be anti-mold man, destroyer of slime. Not bad for a fourth grader. I raised my hand. Mrs. Tuttle, is it okay to change our goals at least a little? Well, revising your goals is part of the process, Mrs. Tuttle said. Sometimes we make goals that are unrealistic or not what we really want after all. Great! I took out my pencil and started erasing my number one, two, and three goals. When I was done erasing, I wrote, one, to get rid of all unnecessary mold in Woodbrook Elementary School. Two, to teach Ben how to count. Three, to be the best fourth grade scientist ever. And that's where we'll stop in chapter two. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect here. All right, so thanks for joining. And um, after listening to or reading chapter one, um, just leave your summary in an email.